61%. Shoot, the brothers would look around and they would run and turn themselves in. And in a little while, they had 51,000 Iraqi troops. Yeah, I used to see them all the time in Tehran. They'd be holding pictures of Imam Khomeini and everything. They were Shias. So then they put the Republican guards behind them. And if they tried to run and surrender, they, the Republican guards would shoot them. That was the job of the Republican guard. Saddam's main people from 1980 to 1988 is to shoot Iraqi troops to try to surrender. That was their job, not to shoot Iranians. They stayed away from fighting Iranians. Their job was to make sure the Shias didn't surrender to the other Shias. So spiritual jihad in ethics, that's our saving force. In a, in a war, you study what are your strong points of your enemy and what are the weak points. This is not psychological way out there stuff. It's simple. Physical? What? The white man got army, all some army people over here. You know, right? It's every day everywhere, right? The police, what do they look like? They look like ninjas. They wear their guns tied down now. They wear bulletproof helmets, right? They got tanks every city. They, they used to just have in Oakland a few more. They have uh, armored military vehicles in every city in the United States. Robocop. Right. Right, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. And, and they have the, and if you got something in the, in the house, they send a little machine up there. It'll slip around and go in the house and blow you up. They got all of that stuff. Why would we fight somebody that got all of that stuff? What's his weak point? Ethics, morals, spiritualism. And he can't touch us. That's why it's hilarious. Think about it. Everything happened with us is hilarious. We can sit back and look at what, because it, it don't make sense what they do. We must have run them crazy. We have technically run boss man crazy. We run crazy because he don't know what to do. He's just trying, throwing stuff up against the wall, see what stick, right? And it don't stick. Why, we got grease all on the wall. We're trying to kind of put that, everything, everything slides down. Because we know that's what he's going to do. I'm telling you, it don't take but a handful of people. We're helping the whole Muslim Islamic movement by scatterbraining the system here, running them crazy. We're not doing it all, but tell me any behavior that they have had in the last decades that made any sense. It turned out good. They invaded Afghanistan. Bad news. They invaded Iraq. Bad news. Saudi Arabia invaded uh, Yemen. Bad news. America talking about selling wolf tickets. They sent to New Jersey a battleship over to, them, uh, to blow, to shoot uh, shells as big as Volkswagens back in the 80s. This is what they sent, right? To Lebanon. The people would come out and they'd say to New Jersey, to the Jersey, when they would capture Americans, they would say, I'm not from New Jersey. They were talking about the battleship. They took a World War ballot two battleship to New Jersey out of mothballs to shoot those big, can you imagine, 16 inch guns. The bomb and them 16 inch guns is the same size as that Volkswagen out there. Blowing up the people. We don't, we don't, we're not fighting a military monster like you say, a robocop. We're using ethics. And we're having fun at it. Just imagine. When a great coach taught you everything he can teach you, then what he tell the team? He said, boy, it's gone out now. Just have fun. You already 
just play this. If you have, you know, because if you have fun, you can stay out in the snow. You see the kids in the snow, you don't see much now. They'd be blue, they little fingernails, they'd be uh, freezing to death, but they're having fun. Look how much pain and suffering you can go through if you're having fun, right? So that's what a good coach will always say, hey man, y'all got the game, y'all got the routines. Now, when you go out there, just have fun. Why, you'll stretch more. You'll hit harder, everything, because it's fun. Right? Okay. That's the same thing we look at. We're having fun doing this. We ain't mad at nobody. 35 years ago we was mad. But in the last 20 years, we ain't been mad at nobody. It just takes time. So it's ethics. Okay. So that training was comprehensive, of course. The other thing, uh, focus on the future. We call it visioneering. You know, that's when you have your own picture of the future. It's like imagination. What kind of world do you want to live in? What type of world do you want to see? Well, this is for the physical world. We want to see the type of world, uh, planet that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us, right? And it's a perfect place. Everything cleans each other, freshens each other up, right? That cycle that we was in before, before we got into this chemical cycle, the earth take care of itself. Now it's in a new dispensation. So what world do we want to live? Physical world? We want to see the one that, that we was that Allah gave Adam and Eve. But he put, him, put them here. But the water is fresh and if it gets stale muddy or uh, sludgy, it gets lifted up into the air, distilled, and come back down. The cleaning cycle worked perfect ever since the earth's been here. And now it's not working. Okay. So we choose a job. We have, if we visualize the earth we want to live in, that's where we want to take society back. It ain't nothing bad about it. We just want to take it back there. Right? Now, what's wrong with a system or a people that would prevent you or any organization from taking the earth back there and then taking it forward and how can all of these people live on the earth and recycle themselves and live in a world that the earth can produce all of its needs, not wants. See, the earth started getting like this it was about a hundred years ago. Uh, what's the name? Son. Uh, not son. Nephew. Uh, what was his name? Bernays. Edward Bernays, something like that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Sigmund Freud's nephew. Sigmund Freud's nephew, something like that. Mm. This is when, it was about 100 years ago. They changed from needs, a, a world of needs, to a world of wants. Why? Because <laughs> that's the exact same time where the world got to where it could produce. It could produce cars and what have you, 100 years ago, where people don't, may not need it, but they would want it, right? When we grew up, you had one or two pair of clothes and mainly one pair of shoes, and you didn't have a whole lot of clothes. Now, when I wanted clothes, 
I would just follow my sons around the masjid. They would take off a $20 t-shirt at that time. All the clothes I had in those days, I got from them. I just walk around, feel like coats, everything. And I, one time I washed uh, one of my son's feel like coats. And I said, here, I washed this for you. He said, I don't want it, Dad. I said, why is that? He said, all the puff, you washed the puff out. You couldn't wash the puff. Remember the puff? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. well, I'm going to wash everything now. <laughs> I'll get a whole new. I'm trying to tell you, how many clothes do we have? Tell this right here. Got so many clothes, we don't know what to do with them. Wants, not needs. The world is poisoned because everybody want this and they want that and that don't last no more than two weeks. Then they want something else. I never bought a pair of a weight set in my life. I always borrowed them a set because I always got 50 friends that's bought a weight set. And I go by their house and I remember, oh yeah, he got a weight set in the garage. He's got a weight set in the garage. He, everybody, all of my friends, had what? Weight sets that they used all of three days. They used them for at least three days. Some of them. They just bought them. They had an idea, I'm going to get my muscles back together, and they use them for two, three days. They'd all still be shiny. What none of them rusted or nothing. Right? We, like, I didn't buy none of that iron out there, I don't think. I just borrowed it from everybody that come by. They might not you have some iron over there? Yeah, man, it is. And it's bars. And I, and I, some of them gave away iron everywhere because people, what? They don't use it. Okay. Wants, not needs. And wants is the thing that's killing the society. But here's the thing. From victimhood to desired destiny. Desired destiny. It's write your own book and all of that type of stuff. That stuff is possible. And it's likely. Everything we're doing now, we thought about this years ago. We're where we are now because of what we've been doing. We've been studying this for decades. We didn't just happen to pop up here. We're doing exactly what we're doing now because of what we have been doing. Whatever happens to us, we anticipated it. We've had classes on, if I remember, on anticipation, right? We've studied anticipation. So our goal is to teach the science of movement, evolution. That's what we're... We're going through what we're going through to show everybody else. We've already shown everybody. Okay, everybody left here. Everybody, nobody came back. Everybody did whatever they did in Oakland. All of that stuff, right? And they do stuff on a regular basis. We have the same smile. We have the same attitude. And we're showing people you can whoop boss man. We can do it by ourselves. Hey, what happens when, you know, teamwork is something else. Man, when a team get a rhythm and they get to rolling, you can't stop them. You can call a timeout, you can do all kinds of, don't make no difference. They just get their rhythm back. You imagine Negroes with evolutionary rhythm. That's where we're headed right now. That's what we're going to produce. We're already producing some of it. Don't think that we got here by ourselves. Mm -mm, don't work like that. And they turn everybody into snitches. If you got 10 family members, 
Just tell on you. You got three or four. The, the rolly eyes. Uh, after all, you gave me my first job. Oh, oh you, you bought my house for me, so I, I ain't gonna forget it. Not all the way. I'm gonna still be a tattletale, but look at here. You don't know what, hey man, boss man think he's invincible, and, and the people, especially with Negroes, Negroes will tell lies to boss man. Negroes, the American Negro, will tell on one nigga and steal everything in boss man's house and all on his computer, right? Yeah. And then, Negroes, some of them has got two or three percent good. Jeez, that much. <laughs> and it kicks in every now and then. You can't look. They don't pay no attention to Negroes is all bad, white folks is all bad, greed, all of that kicks in and it'd be running. But you've seen some of the crookedest people do some of the best deeds once or twice. Right? Once or twice. He cut your throat the rest of the time. Hey, nigga, I, I don't know what you're talking about. But didn't you help me six years ago? Hey, man, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I got a cold, I had a foot ache, or something happened to where I did that good deed. I don't do that all the time. If you come in, I don't even remember what you're talking about. But every now and then, yeah, I'm just, yeah, I'm remembering that. Yeah, there was a brother that hit, hit, hit us up during class. Right. And you were sitting there, for, he was thanking you for something you did. You had to sit and wait for a few seconds to remember <laughs> what, what, he'd even, what you'd even done for the brother. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that, yeah. I remember. Yeah. Hey, man, look, all of that stuff. <laughs> See, remember when an empire or the man about town or any big personality or any big sports figure start going downhill. I don't care if it was a championship boxer. All the decline is different than the ascendancy. In the ascendancy, you're hungry and you can do almost anything. But when you start declining, you start slipping and forgetting and missing and all that stuff, right? The human being, we talk about here every week almost. Birth, growth, decline, and death. Now, how are we going to fit ourselves in the middle of all of that? And doing good, you don't know who's going to do good. Man, you can, get, you can be shocked. So this is what we want to teach. The science of movement evolution. That's why uh, this idea of forgiveness, it's not just, well, that's all you can do. It's not that. It's like... We're dealing with human beings. The human beings is always influenced by the environment. Let's call it the government and all that. And the government got more power than you. We go through it every week. He got more power than you. And he can threaten people. Reward and punishment is in his hands in this world. Not, in the, not like Imam Ali said. He said, oh Allah, I wish I worship you not to gain your paradise or to avoid your hellfire. I worship you because you deserve to be worshipped. So uh, loss and gain, that's behaviorism, right? A dog do something, throw him something, give him a little gain. You do something else you don't like, you give him a little punishment. So pretty soon you've shaped his behavior. Yeah, you shaped his behavior. They do it with human beings. Why do you think? Uh, why do you think everybody leaves when the white man tell them? Because the white man told them. He didn't train them. You do what I say. But it's always going to be two, three renegades. They're going to go along with the program. They know boss man got all the power. But every now and then, something pop up, and you say, "Where did this come from? It ain't none of your business. It's there. Use it." Because there's good people, they're not good, they just have a fit of goodness that don't last no more than 20, 30 minutes. No, there's people like that. You can't, hey man, I got friends that 
they are not good. They're just not good. They, they're just, uh, they're not all bad, but they're not good. They're not good people. But every now and then, yeah, man, I just, well, what you doing that for? I don't know. I ain't gonna do it no more. <laughs> it's a good deed. Why you do that? Because there is some good in everybody. That's what we're depending on. We're not depending on how bad people are. Shoot. Boy, we would lose plenty of sleep adding up the bad behavior of Negroes, you know, Arabs or whoever. Uh, Negroes is just Arabs in the United States. <laughs> <laughs> Now, remember this, I'm going to close in a minute, but boss man used to whip Negroes in public. Remember, he dragged Negroes out, tied them to a wagon wheel or a tree, and whoop Negroes in public. Now, we dragging the white man out and whipping him. And psychologically, tell the truth, we whoop him every week. Can't, he can't get by a week without getting slashed. And see, we forecasted before it happened. Or right now, we give it, if we don't forecast it, we give it the direction that this thing is going. And we mention it so that there's, it, people remember. Just like we talked about China before. We said we want the Chinese to make a vaccine, uh, you know, against, to help the Negroes. Because the white man get tired of niggas, he'll figure out some bug that'll kill off. 85% of the Negroes, right? Or 85% of the Jews. You know what I mean? If he really get mad, which he's, he's capable of doing that. So, we always keep the door open. We just keep the door open. We say, no. People ain't all bad. And here's the other thing. We host the white man weekly in front of him. You gotta imagine how mad he's getting. And then just remember teasing boss man. What does he hate more than anything? To be get teased by a nigga. And we do it every weekend. Yeah, boss man. And it's all on there. Nobody can say, you didn't say it. Didn't. So sometimes saying is doing. If we whoop the white man enough in public, pretty soon the Negro, the Negro gets a little arrogant sometimes. Pretty soon he'll say, if that nigga can do it, I can do it. He's going to say that because the Negro is arrogant. We don't know what date is on there, but if we keep slapping the white man upside down,